Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021. I'm Andrew Hansen alongside Omaha Joe Stanton, crushing it out in Denver. Ready for week three here, Thursday night football. Hard to believe that we're already in week three, but we've got Carolina and Houston, Joe. And you're coming off a Sunday in which you called the K.J. Osborne bomb right off the rip. What a way to start Sunday. Yeah, that, that was awesome. I mean, you see him at the top of the waiver wire ads for fantasy football this week. That's what you want to do. You want to call the breakout. First reception of the game, 64 yards for a touchdown coming from Kirk Cousins. Um, I know our Discord was loving it. Um, I was pumped. It, you know, I saw it coming with, um, you know, he converted a fourth down play in week one. Um, you know, they were clearly going to target him in crucial circumstances. And then, you know, now everyone's going to be on him and the leverage not there. But that was a fun way to start Sunday. That's that's absolutely true. And, you know, hey, we'll just have you get all those selections for this Thursday night game. Right. And, yeah. uh, if you want to call each touchdown throughout the game, that'd be fine. Yeah, that works for me too. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. We, we've had we've had two great Thursday night games to kick off the season, huh? You know, starting off with Cowboys and Buccaneers, and then Giants, Washington, Daniel Jones coming out of nowhere to fight off a strong Washington defense. Both tight games. You know, my Thursday nights have been um, down to the wire, so I'm excited for this one. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of great primetime games so far. This one probably not exactly what the NFL was anticipating when they put. <laughs> This matchup on Thursday night, they thought Deshaun Watson and his star power would be out there, but obviously the off off the field stuff's gotten in the way there. So we've got yeah. Davis Mills to evaluate. We'll get to him in a minute, Joe. But let's just talk about these teams overall uh, with where they've started so far. Carolina's defense has been pretty stingy. Yeah. They've only allowed twenty one points total in their two wins. And how about this? They they give up only 231 yards per game. That's 184 and a half through the air and only 46 and a half yards per game allowed on the ground. Those are pretty stout numbers. Yeah, I oh, couldn't agree more. They're averaging 2.9 yards per rush, 4.9 yards per pass attempt. You know, they're going up against uh, Jameis Winston, you know, Zach Wilson. Um, not your run-of-the-mill best quarterbacks in the league but once you get to the nfl level you know everyone's solid their defense looks like one of the best defenses um going into week three and like you said they are stout from top to bottom they're actually getting um aj um Bouye, their cornerback um he's going to make his um start he was serving a two-week suspension for some steroid um use and he actually you know in the past he missed the whole preseason with jacksonville and he still came out there and started week one. So yeah, I imagine him, he's going to be on the field in week three. So, yeah, I add on another piece to that defense. And, and yeah, the Panthers look good coming into this one. Yeah, and if you look at the totals in Vegas, uh, courtesy of betus.com.pa, our partners, the total is only 43, and Carolina is favored by eight, which yep. means Houston is not expected to do much offensively. And their defense has not been stout. They're giving up almost 400 yards a game. 272 through the air, 116 on the ground. They've they've allowed 52 points. So on paper, things are really looking good here for Carolina, though they are on the road here in a short week. Uh, so let's start with their uh, their breakdown, and let's start with uh, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, great start to the season, ultra expensive, but he does have the best matchup here, according to Pro Football Focus, the run blocking advantage for Carolina. Is, is excellent here, 44%. And if you look at what the Cleveland backs did last week, Chubb and Hunt, 24 carries for 146. That's over six yards per carry. And, you know, McCaffrey's just getting so many touches. The only question I have is, short week, does he cede a few of his touches to Chubb uh, Hubbard, who, uh, you know, hasn't done much yet here, but I love his tape coming out of, of college. He's ultra fast. And I liked how he was involved last week. He got eight carries. Again, didn't do much, but he was out there on a regular basis. It wasn't like he just came in in the fourth quarter for the first time. You know, he was in the flow of the games, and they just didn't really open any holes for him. So mm -hmm. this is my long-winded way of saying, because of this run advantage, 
uh, because it's a short week. I like McCaffrey and Hubbard. I think you can play them both. Uh, and I think they'll, I think Hubbard will get plenty of opportunities here, but McCaffrey, you know, the question is, can we pay up for him here on, on a short week? Yeah, I, I, those are great points, Andrew, and I think you can. Um, the Texans have the Texans have allowed uh, three touchdowns on the ground through these first two weeks. McCaffrey's numbers haven't jumped off the page, but that's because we expect so much from Christian McCaffrey. You know, he's having good games here um, against some against some tough um, run blocking, and I mean, he is set up to have have a great game. And I agree with you on um, on Hubbard in the last game versus the Saints. The Panthers are up by 19. Matt Rule keeps McCaffrey in the game um, to all the Panthers fans surprise saying, what are you doing? Don't get him injured. But he was giving him reps, and he was still giving those reps to Hubbard. He Matt Rule did say after the game that you know he recognizes that they were up so much. He might make a change. So I think in this sort of game that we are expecting the Panthers to be up and in it to be a low-scoring game, I think, the, I think on the ground for the Panthers is going to be a big part of their offense. And I agree. I think you can play them both with some garbage time probably coming. Hopefully, I think Hubbard's going to get enough reps. But even without garbage time, I think he's going to be there in there just as much. The one guy behind him, Royce Freeman, is still getting um, acclimated with the offense. The Broncos released him, and of course, they picked him up. But he even said in an interview he's still trying to get down that chemistry. So I don't think Royce Freeman is going to be much of a factor here. I think the run game is going to be a big part of this Panthers offense. And I agree. I think McCaffrey and Hubbard are both both good plays, and you can play them together. Yeah, the other thing to keep an eye on is CMC did have a bit of a calf issue last week. So does that come up again? Does it limit his touches? Um, that's going to be an important situation here to evaluate. But I, I do like them both. Let's look at the passing game a little bit. Sam Darnold off to a solid start. And again, if you look at what Cleveland did last week, Baker Mayfield was 19 of 21. So over 90%. You know, basically they had their way. You know, they they ran it and passed it at will. This was without their top receivers. OBJ right. was out. Landry got hurt after one catch. So, you know, they didn't have all their weapons, and they were able to move the ball pretty easily. So I like Darnold as a potential play here. His favorite target's been DJ Moore, and he's got the best matchup for receivers against cornerbacks, according to Pro Football Focus, in this game. He's certainly more expensive than the other pass catchers. Robbie Anderson's a nice discount. Uh, you know, he's he's playable. And then there's the the next level, the third tier of receivers, Terrace Marshall and and Zilstra. Uh, Zilstra got in the end zone last week. Terrace Marshall, another guy I really liked his tape coming out of college. Um, you know, he's getting he's getting his feet wet. Um, you know. I'm looking at him as a potential play here because obviously it's very difficult to play Darnold, CMC, and DJ Moore. So that's the decision we have to make is do we sit one of those guys and get some exposure to this passing game with one of those cheaper options? What are your thoughts on those pass catchers? Yeah, um, I agree with you there. I think Sam Darnold, he threw for 305 yards, two touchdowns, an interception in that game against the Saints. The interception was kind of on a fallback to Hubbard. Um, he really could have just taken the snack, the the sack, and got away with it. No interception there. So he's been good, um, but he's throwing these short slant routes over the middle um, to DJ Moore and then Christian McCaffrey when he flies out. I will say the Panthers' offensive line and how they've been running the ball hasn't been mind blowing the past two weeks. I think most of their red zone has come from the short slant route from DJ Moore, and DJ Moore picks up yards after the catch. So I think DJ Moore is a fantastic play. I think Christian McCaffrey, for that same reason, is a fantastic play because I think they're dumping it over the middle. But as far as the discount goes, you know, you have Robbie Anderson getting four targets in the first two weeks, which is kind of mind blowing because he was supposed to have this breakout performance. And I think it's, I think it's very easy to jump to conclusions in two weeks. And I think that's what a lot of the DFS players will do with Robbie Anderson. I think in this sort of game, the Texans aren't going to put a ton of pressure on Sam Darnold. And he's going to have a little bit more time in the pocket to fly it out to someone like Robbie Anderson. And that's how you're going to get different in this in this sort of game. Zilstra and Terrence Marshall, I agree with you. I think Terrence Marshall looks really good. He's quick. He's speedy. Um, he's picking up, I think, for the season, he has six receptions for 43 yards. So it's not an overwhelming target share, but it's nothing to, you know, roll your eyes over. As far as Zilstra goes, um, he had 14 offensive snaps in week two. 
he he made it the most out of those snaps. He can absolutely get more here in week three, but I still think he's down there on the waiver wire. So yeah, I think a punt play to Terrence Marshall would probably be my favorite over Zilstra. And I think these pass catching guys, I would feel more safe going to DJ Moore. But if you're going in a mass GPP where you think you can get some leverage, I don't think Robbie Anderson's a bad option at all. Yeah, Anderson in general is a real nice GPP play because he'll hit that home run every now and then. Right. And uh, when he does, that's when you want him. Um, I'll also mention the tight ends here. And good matchup. Last week, Cleveland had 11 receptions with their tight ends for 107. Now, that's a little misleading because, again, those other top wide receivers were out for Cleveland. So they needed to mm-hmm. use those three tight ends. But, uh, you know, Darnold has shown that he likes to use the tight end. And, you know, we, what, if, if we, if we can't, if, if we, uh, what I'd like to do is take advantage of, of Darnold to D Arnold, right? I mean, you can't really avoid that. We got to at least get one lineup out there with that, with that combo. It just, and it looks, it looks too good on paper. It does. Exactly. <laughs> and if you're comparing Dan Arnold to Ian Thomas, you know, look, w- watching the tape in that last game against New Orleans, Dan Arnold was the one who had more of the downfield routes, you know, yep. up the seam. And he's got, I think, a much better chance to make a chunk play, maybe even get in the end zone. So I'm going to put some lineups together with Darnold and D. Arnold. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think if you're playing on DraftKings, as far as the Panthers' defense goes, because obviously we've been talking about them so much, you can definitely play the the, the defense in this under low scoring game. Unfortunately, you can't get the, you know, it's not available on FanDuel. But as far as DraftKings goes, if you're playing over there, definitely give the Panthers defense a look um, because I think this one can easily stay within reason and, you know, they can put up a lot of points. Absolutely. All right, Joe, before you break down Houston, do you want to tell folks a little bit about the social media perspective? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have a go follow us on Twitter. It's at DFSCoachTalk.com. We actually give away, uh, they're called Hanson Hot Routes for these single games where we give out our top stack or our top value. And it's out there on Twitter about 30 minutes before the lineups come out. Turn on those notifications because it's just a great um, information we're going to put out there before um, before you lock in your lineup. And then we also give out a lot of information about contests. We just had a three-day pass to come into our Discord. Uh, we give out a lot of memberships and we give out a lot of good looks. Definitely go follow us over there. Uh, to become a member, we have our full NFL um, DFS season pass. Um, which is a great value. It's at three hundred fifty dollars. But we also have a we also have a five day pass that gets you Thursday through Monday. We've had a lot of people take advantage of that. It's nineteen dollars. You're going to get all of our lineups in Discord. We give out full lineups for FanDuel. Uh, we give out a clipboard for for DraftKings, and we also give out Yahoo lineups as well. Um, and that looks really good across the board. It's it's me, Andrew, Josh, and then we got MLB going. The Ryder Cup just go check out that podcast with Coach. So yeah. Even though you're paying for the five days specifically for NFL, you're going to get all those lineups and you're going to get all the winnings. So go follow us on Twitter and go to DFSCoachTalk.com to check out our memberships. Yeah, g- great stuff. And and speaking of the lineups that we give out on FanDuel and Yahoo, um, man, on that Lions-Packers game, if MVS had gotten one of those bombs, oh. we would have been in takedown city on Yahoo. Um Yep. I just can't believe Rodgers missed him on two bombs and that two-yard slant for a touchdown. Um, just so uncharacteristic. But the point is, as we get ready for week three, Joe, we have had some lineups that are just right on the verge of smashing. And I think this is the week we put it all together. So great time to join us, DFSCoachTalk.com. Sort of like the the KG Osborne, like get in now before the big play because it's coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sweet, Andrew. Let's uh let's jump over to the Texans side. Um, so of course um, Tyrod Toy- Tyrod Taylor went out first half with a hamstring issue, and Davis Mills came in third round pick out of Stanford. In that in that game against the Browns, he went eight of eighteen for hundred two yards, about five point seven yards per pass attempt. He had a touchdown to Brandon Cooks. Um, he also threw an in- he also threw an interception. What I saw there, and this is actually what Tim Kelly, the offensive coordinator, saw was he was extremely rattled in that first drive of the Browns game. Um, He did not, you know, he got thrown. I don't think he expected to play that game. So he's getting thrown in for his first snaps. He just looked awfully rattled. But then I actually felt like he actually did settle in a good amount. 
and I didn't think he looked too bad at all. He used his legs a little bit, which I've really enjoyed seeing. He, And I think that goes to a lot of the um, work that he got in the preseason. So, of course, we had the Tyrod Taylor um, and the QB battle going there. And in the preseason, um, Mills threw for – he completed 48% of his throws, 333 yards. He had four interceptions and two touchdowns. But overall in the preseason, he's had – among backup quarterbacks, he had the most looks. So I think going into this week where he knows he's going to be the starter and he has a short time to prepare, but mentally he's there. He knows he's going to start. I actually think Mills is an okay option in this game. It's a tough Panthers defense. I completely understand. I think he has great energy with Brandy, um, with Brandon Cooks, and we'll get to the wider receivers. I'm curious what you think about Mills, but I don't think all hope is lost for the Texans here. Yeah, I, I saw what you did. Um, you know, he he didn't even know where the running back was going to be on those first couple of plays. He so hit him just, in the back. Yeah, he just, yeah. you know, he wasn't ready to go on all the plays. I agree. It must have been because he just mentally wasn't in that mindset, you know, before the game. But I think, like you said, he will be here. And what I liked about him was that he wasn't afraid to let it loose and, and throw it deep. He had a couple deep throws that I liked. He went intermediate. He dumped it off. So he was passing to all three levels. And I thought when he was throwing, it looked like he was throwing with confidence and some some arm strength. So I think he's certainly capable. And if the game script plays out like we're talking about, they're going to be coming from behind. They're going to need to throw a bunch. Right. I would agree. And I think one of his best receivers is to pair him up with his Brandon Cooks. Um, he had 14 targets. Um, last week in week two against the Browns, and the next receiver on the Texans had two. That might be Andy. the biggest differential I've ever seen. Absolutely I think it, it, not. For me too. I mean, seven to one ratio of 14 to two, it's unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, there. Um, I just saw a video on NFL Network. Brandon Cooks has been working with Mills, not just this week, but he was working with him in the preseason. So Mills was staying after camp to get reps in and Brandon cooks would be the one guy staying after in the wide receiver locker room to help him get reps in. And I mean, that goes to Brandon cooks, just wanting to get better and having him eager to just be out there on the field, but they already have developed chemistry and that played out obviously in that Browns game with how many targets he got. But as far as chemistry goes on the field, Mills in his first official start as a Texans, I think he's going to go to someone that he feels confident with. And he has that already developed chemistry there. Brandon Cooks going 9 for 14 for 78 yards. He looked great in that first game against Jacksonville. I think Brandon Cooks is clearly the number one, and I do like him here with the high passing game. Yeah, I mean, he's averaging seven catches for over 100 yards per game. He's got the second best matchup, according to Pro Football Focus, in this game for wide receivers. And you got to pay for him. You know, just like the target ratio, look at the price differential between Cooks and the rest of these wide receivers. He's at 10,000 on DraftKings. The next highest receiver is only 1,600, Chris Conley. So that's another thing you just do not see. If you want to go to a second receiver, you can get him at a major discount. So what do you think about the other pass catchers and these running backs? Well, I was actually I was actually going to throw it over to you uh, for sure. the backup wide receivers. But, I mean, Danny Amendola is out. You have, yeah. Nico um, likewise, out. Nico Collins is out. Anthony Miller – um, and Andre Roberts was out there for a little bit. Looks like on their depth chart, Chris Conley is going to be the number two. Yeah, it, it's a bummer because a lot of them just haven't gotten that many snaps with the amount of injuries that happened in the wide receiver locker room. I don't have a strong take on who I might go to. Do you? Well, Conley is. I mean, let's describe it here. He got a nice bump in snaps with those injuries, mm -hmm. but at, at sixteen hundred, he's been low volume in terms of targets. He's more of a touchdown dependent type guy he's got that ability more of an outside receiver with size andre roberts more of a slot guy gadget guy very cheap at 600 on DraftKings, and he also was returning some kicks so he could get his his hands on the ball that way but then anthony miller sure. he's the wild card here because he's only a thousand on DraftKings. and he has been a scratch here these first two weeks he's been dealing with a shoulder issue so if he is active, and that's one thing we have to look at on Thursday, assuming he's active, I think he's worth a look, especially on DraftKings at 1,000 PPR. 
um, you know, they need uh, different weapons, different guys to use. He's talented enough to get four or five catches, 50 yards. You know, if you get that type of performance from him, I mean, that's a great return on his price. So I like it. I, I think on DraftKings, maybe the safe play for me would be Miller. Uh, then if you look more upside for Conley or if you need a really cheap guy, you could go with Roberts. That's great. That's, that's great. And I, and I like, I, I like what you had to say there. And I think you're right with this passing game. They need gadgets. They need weapons. As far as the running backs go for the Texans, you have Ingram, you have Lindsay, you have Johnson. Ingram's get, been getting a majority of the work. Now get this in, in the Browns game when Mills was in the running game completely stopped. For, for the Texans. Granted, they were going uphill with the passing, but they had 14 carries for 27 yards against the Browns. And the Browns are stacking the box with eight defensive linemen 57% of the time. I mean, the run game was practically not there. So what I'm going to look to in this game is I'm going to look for the Texans running back that I think has the most receiving upside. Phillip Lindsay had that catch in the Browns game. It was a it was a shuffle. Um, he was on the side. It was a 22 yard for a touchdown, but that was his only target of the game. Actually, Mark Ingram has had the most receiving targets among those three. Um, he's had six in the, in the two weeks. He actually had one red zone target um, for a pass. He's the only running back that had a red zone target uh, uh, in the air for the Texans. Um, and still Mark Ingram had four red zone rushes as well last week. And he is getting the majority of the of the carries here for the Texans. So I think in a game where the Texans are going to have to go to the air, I think Ingram would be my guy to go to because of their receiving upside. But to be completely honest, I think Lindsey or Johnson, it's going to be one of those going for possibly a touchdown in the air. I just my money would be on Ingram. Wow, you're going to pass up your former Bronco and Philip Lindsey. I know, right? Former pro and bowler. you said you don't think Freeman's <laughs> going to do anything on the other side. Wow, this is impressive. What a what a shift from our from our last podcast when we only <laughs> talked about the Broncos, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I agree um, that we need to look at these guys. Who's going to catch passes? Because you said the stats of what they did against Cleveland, and look at what Carolina just did to Alvin Kamara: eight carries for five yards. Yeah. If he had eight carries for five yards. I think Ingram might have eight carries for negative five at best. <laughs> I mean, I just have no faith in Ingram running the ball here. So who do they pass to? Great stats, great analysis. I'm going to lean towards David Johnson just because of his talent and you know the chance to break one. If he gets it in his hands, I think he has the best chance to do, to do some damage. You know, he was out there late uh, with Mills in the game against Cleveland uh, getting some looks. I just think he's by far the most talented back. So, and he's the cheapest on DraftKings. So, for those reasons, I, I'll, I'll go with him in in a lineup or two potentially. He was um, he was my second guy to to Lindsey. I think yeah. either one. I think people are going to see Lindsey got that one receiving touchdown. They're going to be like, okay, Lindsey's the receiving back, which he's not. And I think Ingram or or David Johnson's. Um, I think that's great. I think it, and as far as value goes, like when you're fitting in the McCaffrey. The Darnold, the D, you know, all of those upper guys, you're going to have to find someone like that. And I agree. I think it's a great call. Excellent. What do you, um, what do you think about the tight end for Houston? So, um, you know, Pharaoh Brown had four catches in the first game on five targets, uh, a little bit banged up last week, only one target. Aikens had a catch. Uh, but he's been sort of low volume, two targets each week. I like his talent, his size. Uh, he's cheaper on DraftKings. You know, I wouldn't mind going there, um, but I'm not looking at this group with much interest. I'd rather go with a, one of these wide receivers on Houston who's even cheaper. Yeah. So probably won't have much exposure to the Houston tight ends. I would agree. It's not a priority for me um, on this on this in this game. I agree with you. I think Brown. Um, I think from week one with his four targets, I like him. I bet it's not a necessity now. What do you what do you think about the kickers for both sides? Do you think this happens from last Thursday night game where we had both kickers on both ends in the optimal lineup? Do you think this could become a little bit of a kicking fest here? It's possible. Again, you know, I like it a little bit more on FanDuel. Uh, sometimes the prices just work out where 
you get that eight to nine thousand dollar player, and if he kicks four field goals, he's probably going to outscore, you know, the third receivers right. and the back of running backs in that price range. So, a uh, playable, but not not a priority for me. Right there with you. Same Good. way. Yep. Beautiful. Well, we're going to keep uh, putting our heads together with our priorities that we do like as we finalize these lineups for our members. So be sure to jump in with us at DFSCoachTalk.com. Grab that five-day pass Joe was talking about. Get our lineups for Thursday night. Full lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo. Core lineups for DraftKings. And then everything through the weekend with Ryder Cup, Major League Baseball, main slate on Sunday. It's a great weekend in sports. So DFSCoachTalk.com is where you sign up and join the fun. Did I miss anything, Joe? I don't think so. Excited for everyone to get in here um, and just, you know, feel how great the community is. It's been, I, t I think I say this every pod, but it's just, it's awesome to see everyone interacting and yeah, it, it's going to be a great NFL season. Yep. And we're going to kick it off this week with a huge week three. So uh, great work tonight, Joe. Uh, thanks for jumping on here. Thanks to everybody else for tuning in. Uh, please do like the podcast on youtube if you don't mind and subscribe to that channel we appreciate that and then we'll be back this weekend with some main slate coverage josh crash davis will be uh, ready to roll and then uh we'll be back again before you know it for the the show the prime time show and then week four next week so but let's let's uh let's crush week three first and then we'll see you later this weekend and next week as we look to continue to crush it in DFS.